Now I've got a lot of these gems sitting around that I really don't do much with and I should because they are very pretty. So what I'm going to do is a little bit of an experiment today. Now I've been seeing recently a lot of people are doing this what they call water or raindrop effect. And this is something I did a long, long time ago and it is really, really pretty. So I'm going to combine that as it seems to be quite popular with these gems and see if that works out. Now, one person who I have seen do something on this recently is Daniel Cooper. If you haven't checked out his channel, then please check it out. I'll link it in the description below. He is the master with alcohol inks. I bow to him. He is amazing. So please check his channel out and send him some love. Lovely guy and a great resin artist as well. So what I'm going to do first is using the high viscosity UV resin, put one or two of these little raindrops in. I'm not going to do all the hearts. I'm only doing a few. And using the high viscosity resin does mean that it is going to stay where you put it. So let's do two hearts. I love this resin. It is amazing. As a UV resin, J Diction is without a doubt the best on the market. And they have a variety of UV resins that you can use. So they have this high viscosity, a low viscosity, low odor one, a classic one. Oh, Whatever you need it for, they've got a resin for. I will link in the description below. Don't worry, everything that I use. So if you want to get hold of it, you can. So there's a few like that. And I'm also going to do a couple of pendants and some earrings and see how they go. But I'll do those off camera and show you them at the end. Now this one, I'm going to run a micro brush through and turn them into proper little drops. Look how easy that is to do that. So just pulling it and pulling it like that. And that'll turn them into little drops. The others, I'm just going to leave it as it is. And now I'm going to cure them up using this little lamp. So they're all cured now. And before I do anything else, what I'm going to do is add some of these gems in. And how I'm going to do that is by putting a little bit of UV resin on there like that. And then dropping the gem on. And I'm going to add these gems wherever I think they should be added. And push them in nicely like that. Now, I have no idea if this is going to come out well or it's going to look... But I can't wait to have a look and see. I'm only putting a very tiny bit of UV resin on there. And these gems cost nothing. I mean, you get loads of them for next to nothing. They're made of plastic, I think. They're not made of anything expensive. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to finish off putting the gems in here and the rest like this. I'm going to do all different coloured ones and then I'll show you what I'm going to do next. So I've got all my gems on that bit now and what I'm going to do is cure those up and how I'm going to do that is shining it through the bottom onto these gems where I've just stuck them in using that UV resin. And they're nice and cured now. What I need to do is go in with a bit of of mica powder and I'm using a bronze mica powder here and what I'm going to do is brush this mica powder using I don't know why I'm using a cotton bud to be perfectly honest I have no idea why I'm using a cotton bud <laughs> using this little brush <laughs> that I normally use making sure I brush around the whole of the mold and it doesn't matter if I brush on top of these little gems because it's plastic that will actually brush off and then I'm going to do the same again for here blow out and get rid of anything that I don't need any excess like that and then carry on and do the same for the other pieces so I'm ready to mix up my resin and I'm going to be using the four hour demold resin here and the reason is I want this to really set up as quickly as possible now the important thing is to make sure that you have a really dark background. I'm using a black mica powder and I'm ensuring that while I'm mixing this in that I've not got any dry spots in there because it is easy to leave some dry spots of powder that's not mixed in and then you won't get such a good effect. Massive thank you to all my members whose names are coming up now. The membership has grown really well. Don't forget members, we've got a springtime competition going on at the moment with some great prizes in the members only group and also a couple of live streams coming up as well soon. If you'd like to become a member, benefit from one of the perks, then the link for that is in the description below. Now I'm filling this up 
and I'm going to go through and fill it right to the very top of this mold because I think it's important to make sure that you've got this filled up and that way by filling right to the top you really don't have any of those sharp edges when you get a little bit of shrinkage. A massive thank you to everyone that got me a coffee especially Mrs Wang thank you you've been supporting me now for well over two years I can't tell you how much I appreciate you Mrs Wang Thank you, and everyone that buys me a coffee. I'm currently saving up for a special piece of equipment that I'm looking forward to sharing with you soon. Now, filling up the rest of these, again, you don't need to fill them up too slowly. To be honest, it's not a very deep mould, so you're not going to get too many trap bubbles on them. But I will go over it with a long neck lighter. Not a torch, don't forget, because you don't want to be going over it with a torch. It'll burn your moulds. And don't forget, as well, I'm also on Facebook and on Instagram now. I'm loving the Instagram. It is really great. And being able to share behind-the-scenes photos and different bits and pieces. So check me out on there. Link for that is in the description below. Now, I'm pushing around, making sure that all my mould is covered. There is no bits where there is no resin. And now I'm going over, as I said, with a long neck torch. Pop in any bubbles that come up. There shouldn't be too many bubbles. And if you haven't already done so, please check out my other crafting channel. It's still fairly small, but I do some brilliant projects on there. And I have a great lot of fun, a lot of upcycling and things like that. Please check me out. I'd love to see you over there and read some of your comments. So finishing off now, giving this its final torch in after another five minutes. That will get rid of all those bubbles. And then I will cure this up probably overnight. It will be completely cured by the morning and ready to demold. Well, these are all lovely and cured now. I can't wait to see what they look like. Let's have a look at the earrings first. Oh, and they've come out really, really pretty. And the stones have gone like little drops of themselves, similar to the clear resin, which I knew they would do. But what they've done is they've given a great colour. And I really like that colour. And the earrings are very much a pair. This is a very popular technique at the moment, so I had to show it as well. Yeah, I'm very pleased with those. So let's have a look at the pendant. Oh, and the pendant has come out equally as nice. I love this greyish background to it. I think that looks really cute. Let's see what the pendant looks like with the chain on. I always think that just transforms a pen penguin. A pendant as well by putting a chain on it. Look at that. That looks so cool. Let's have a look at the hearts. Oh, and they've come out really cool too. I love this. Having the different colours really does set them off. I do like that two-tone one. I think there's nothing nicer than a two-tone. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this. It's such an easy technique. Gives you some great results. Looks like Emmental cheese. Please boot that like button, really helps my videos to get out there. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to check out the video coming up next on tips and tricks on using UV resin. And you'll be surprised what you learn in that one. Take care, enjoy your resin, bye.